Hi guys, in this video we'll be making some custom ribbon lettering in Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is a great app but it can seem a little overwhelming when you first get into it. So in this video we'll be covering things like the Shape Builder tool, the Gradient tool, using clipping masks and touching on using the pen and pencil tools. The great thing about Affinity Designer is that the desktop and iPad versions of their apps are basically the same. So even though I'll be going through this tutorial using the iPad, you can follow along with the desktop version. So let's jump in. You don't need to worry about what the canvas size is because we'll be doing it in vector format. What you do need is some lettering, some single stroke lettering, either like what I've done here or you can trace over a font. So first we need to duplicate our lettering and we do that by either clicking on the three dots at the top of the screen or a three finger swipe down on the screen to bring up the quick menu. We need to duplicate it twice so that we have a copy we don't touch as a backup. Select the top two copies of your lettering and group them by clicking on the middle icon of the layers panel. Select one of the two copies and move it down and to the right to create the thickness of your ribbon lettering. Now using the pen tool, we need to close off our lettering by drawing a line wherever we find a gap of two lines. This may not necessarily be just at the end of the word, but wherever there is a sharp corner. With the pencil tool selected, we are now going to round off our letters to represent the folds where the ribbon changes direction. You do this at the top and bottom of all the curved letters. If you can't get your canvas to rotate, then go to the navigation panel and unlock the rotation by clicking on the lock icon to turn it off and on. If you find your lines are too wobbly, then turn on the rope stabilizer on the menu bar to help with smoother curves. Let's put all those curves and lines into a group. As there are so many layers, a quick way to select them all is by clicking on the bottom layer, tapping on the command controller and highlighting the shift or arrow icon and then tapping on the very top layer. Next, select the Shape Builder tool, making sure that the option Create New Shape from Selected Areas is switched on. To use the Shape Builder tool, just draw over the shapes you want and it will turn those separate elements into a solid shape. You'll see here that it turned it white. So you can see the shapes underneath for this part, remove the fill. Continue doing this over the whole word, creating the shapes up to where the ribbon changes direction. If you find that a shape isn't highlighted when you draw over it, then you may need to adjust some of the lines or curves that we did earlier. Once you've finished making all the shapes, group them and turn off the original outline lettering layers from which you made them. With that group of new shapes we've just created, give it a color. For this example, we're gonna use the classic red for ribbons. Now select the gradient tool and draw over the first shape. As default, yours might come out as a black and white gradient. To change the color, tap on one of the nodes and select the bright red we're using then select the other node and choose a dark reddish brown. Move the nodes around to position the gradient to make it look like a shadow of the ribbon is folding over. Because we also need a shadow at the bottom of this shape as well, using the gradient tool just moves the current shadow from the top to the bottom. So to change this, we will need to draw a shape covering the area then apply a gradient to it of bright and dark red. Then we'll drag that gradient layer onto the curved shape layer to create a clipping mask layer, which if you didn't know, makes an invisible cutout area based on the layer below. 
As you can see in this example, it hides the parts of the custom shape we created. If you find the shape you've applied the shadow to is above the adjacent shape, then go into the layers panel and position that adjacent shape above the shadow layer. To quicken up your process, you can save a gradient. Click on the move tool, then tap on the three line drop down menu on the color palette to save the current fill color. Continue to go around the rest of your lettering using this process of creating shadow gradients. If you have a section where the gradient needs to go from light to dark and back to light again, tap on the middle of the gradient line to add a new node. Now we've done all the shadows, we're going to add some highlights. Draw a gradient on the shape, tap the middle of the line to add a node and make the first and last colours red and the middle one a light pink. Again you can save this gradient to speed up your process. Our last step is to apply a simple drop shadow to all our lettering. Click on the FX panel and turn on the drop shadow. Increase the offset. Increase the radius. And adjust the opacity. And that concludes our ribbon lettering tutorial. I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.